Hey guys, welcome to section 3.5 on the standard form of the equation of a straight line. Let's get started. Again, just a friendly reminder, there's three forms of the equation of a straight line that we're dealing with. Slope intercept form, point slope form, and now the last form that we're responsible for is the standard form. The standard form states that ax plus by equals c. Let's take a look at this in a little more detail. So let's say the variable, uh, or not let's say, the variable in this case is x and y. a is a constant, b is a constant, and c is a constant. So what I want you to observe here is that both variables are on the same side of the equation and the free-floating constant is by itself. Again, the variables are on both the same side of the equation, and the free-floating constant is by itself. Now, the downside of this equation, or this form, is that it does not give us any information on the slope or any of the intercepts. So the coefficient of x here is not the slope of the line. In fact, it doesn't give us any information. And as a result, it looks nice. I, I don't know if that's a statement that I can make, but it looks more aesthetically pleasing to people, so that's why we use it. But mathematically speaking, the point-slope form and the slope-intercept form are far more useful. As a result, when we're solving problems, you should never, ever, ever start with the standard form because there's no place to plug in the slope or the y-intercept if we're given it. So... Never, ever, ever start with a standard form whenever someone asks you for the equation of a straight line. So there are, the, here are a couple of examples of equations in standard form. So again, notice the variables are on the same side, variables are on the same side, same side, same side, and the free-floating constants are on the other side. Here, the y and the x are on opposite sides, y and x are on opposite sides, same thing here. Same thing here. Now notice here that the variables seem to be on the same side, but they really aren't because there's a 12x on the other side. So all the variables have to be on one side, and it has to be a constant on the other side by itself. It cannot be a constant times one of the variables. So let's jump into an example. Let's say we have to find the equation of a line in standard form that passes through these two points. Hopefully you definitely know and recognize these two points by now. And the slope that we got in the previous two sections was 7 thirds for this particular line joining these two points. Now if we were to use the first point, we can write the equation of this line using point-slope form. So I won't go over this again, we did this last section. And then what we can do is we can start with that equation and turn it into an equation represented in standard form. You can take a piece of steak that's medium, cook it a little bit longer, and turn it into a well-done steak. So this is what I meant by never start with the standard form. So whenever someone says find the equation of a line that passes through something or there's some conditions that are given to you, Always start either using point-slope form or slope-intercept form. Get your equation. Simplify it, manipulate it so that it eventually turns into standard form. So let's go over this one. The next couple I'll leave to you to verify. So here, again, we distribute the 7 thirds into both these fractions, or to turn them into two fractions. We multiply every single term by 3, as we've done in past sections to get 3y minus 9 equals 7y minus 4, 7x minus 14. We add the 9 over to the other side because that's the inverse operation of subtraction. So we did all this in the last section. And in fact, we got all the way to here, 3y equals 7x minus 5. And then in the previous section, what we did was we divided every single term by 3. So the y was by itself and you had turned the equation into slope-intercept form. So in fact, every single step was the same all the way until here. Now instead of dividing every single term by 3, what happens if we take this 7x 
and move it over to the left hand side. Currently, it's, it's a positive 7x. So if I were to pick this up and move it over to the other side, I would end up getting a negative 7x. Now let's think about this. Are the variables both on the same side of the equation? Yes. Is the free floating constant by itself on the other side? Also yes. That means that this is the equation of the line in standard form. This is the same thing as this. And that, it, both of these forms are the same as y equals 7 thirds x minus 5 thirds. So the equation of the line is the same regardless of which form you write it in. But there's three different ways of representing it. The slope intercept form, the point slope form, and the standard form. And when I say slope intercept, I'm pointing at this empty space in the middle because if you were to divide the three over to the other side, you would get slope intercept form. So it's this is not slope intercept. If you were to divide the three over, you would turn this into slope intercept form. Similarly, if we were to find the equation of a line in standard form, given a slope that passes through a certain point. Well, again, we could start with the point slope form, replace the y1 with seven, well, that goes there, m we're given is the slope, which is three halves, x minus x1, which is negative five. So we did this in the last section uh, to get the equation to turn into slope intercept form, or we verify that they were the same. So the steps are identical. We distribute the three halves into x plus five. So three halves times x is three halves x. Three halves times five is 15 over two. At this stage, we can multiply every single term by two to get rid of these twos in the denominator. And that leaves us with 2y minus 14 equals 3x plus 15. At this stage, we can take a slight detour and instead of trying to solve for y to get the equation in slope intercept form, if we want the answer in standard form, both variables need to be on the same side. So what we can do is we can take this 3x and move it over to the left because it's positive, when we move it over, it becomes negative. And we can take this negative 14, and because it's negative, when we move it over, it becomes a positive 14. 15 plus 14 is 29. So we finally get our equation 2y minus 3x equals 29. Notice that the variables are on the same side. The constant is by itself on the other side. So this is the answer in standard form. Again, I wanted the answer in standard form. I definitely did not start with the standard form. There's no place to plug the slope, uh, although we do have a place to plug in the points, but it's just gonna give us an issue. So start with the slope intercept or point slope. Now here we started with point slope. I solved the same question again with slope intercept form. So let's say we come up with the equation first in slope intercept form and see how then we could change it or turn it into standard form. So if we start with y equals mx plus b, that's the equation of the line. We plug in y, we plug in m, we plug in x, and then in order to solve for b, we can multiply three halves and negative five. That'll give us negative 15 over two. We can multiply every single term by two to get rid of this two on the bottom. 2 times 7 would give us 14. Negative 5 halves times 2, the 2s will cancel each other out, plus 2b. So we have 14 equals negative 15 plus 2b. This 15 is being subtracted on the right-hand side, so the inverse operation moving it over to the other side would be addition. So 14 plus 15 equals 2b. 14 plus 15 is 29. And in order to get b by itself, because the operation between 2 and b is multiplication, I can divide the 2 over to the other side, giving me b equals 29 over 2. So the equation that we get in slope-intercept form is y equals, remember the m needs to be a constant, so m was given to us as 3 halves, so that goes there, x plus b just turned out to be 29 over 2, so that goes there. So this is the answer in slope-intercept form, but we wanted it in standard form. 
So in standard form, there's two ways out. One way is I can just take this 3 halves x, move it over to the left hand side, and I would get y minus 3 halves x equals 29 over 2, which is the answer in standard form. But the reason why I'm clearing out the fractions is to show you that you end up getting the same exact answer as on the previous slide when we used the point slope form to start. So what we can do at this stage is multiply all three terms by two. That'll get rid of these two fractions. So the two on the bottom and the two on top cancel. The same thing happens here. And we're left with 2y equals 3x plus 29. We can subtract the 3x over to the other side, and that'll give us a 2y minus a 3x equals a 29. And this is exactly the same as what we had on this page down here. 2y minus 3x equals 29. 2y minus 3x equals 29. So you can start solving the equation using the point-slope form. You can start solving it using the slope-intercept form. The answer ends up being the exact same. And finally, here's a question that is quite simple, but for some reason, a lot of students mess up on. So let's say you were given an equation, 3p plus 4q equals 12, and we're given that q is the dependent variable, meaning q is the output variable. So imagine q to be like y. And the question says, find the slope and the vertical intercept. So because q is the dependent variable, we're finding the q intercept. Now, normally y is the dependent variable, so we find the y-intercept. But remember, the variables don't always have to be x and y. So as long as we know which the dependent variable is, we can find that intercept. So hopefully you remember from the beginning of this uh, little discussion that this form is entirely useless to us when it comes to finding slopes or intercepts. We cannot say that the slope is 3. We cannot say that the slope is 4. Both of those would be incorrect. So what we can do is solve for the dependent variable, or solve for the quote-unquote y. And what we can do here is we have 3p plus 4q equals 12. The 3p is being added on the left-hand side, so I can subtract it over to the right. Excuse me. Now at this stage, I'm left with 4q equals negative 3p plus 12. In order to get the q by itself, I need to get rid of this 4. So I can divide every single term by 4. That will cancel this one out. Negative 3p over 4 will just stay as it is. And then 12 over 4 comes here, which we can simplify to be 3. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So this is the equation in slope intercept form. Now again, whenever someone asks you for a slope, the equation either needs to be in point slope form or in slope intercept form. We can never turn an equation into point slope form, but we can always turn an equation, regardless of which form you start with, into slope intercept form. So that's why we did that here. Now the coefficient of the independent variable or imagine there to be a y here equals mx plus b. This coefficient of the independent variable is what the slope is. So the slope of this line is negative 3 over 4. And the q-intercept, remember q was the dependent variable. So the q-intercept will be 0, 3. And that's it. As always, please feel free to reach out if you guys have any questions. Have a nice evening.